Hi, I'm Dr. Sandy Nenga, and I'm Chair of the Department of Sociology and Anthropology. And at Southwestern University, our department is known for how much research we have students doing on campus and how much research we have students doing with faculty. So Dr. Berger asked me to give a talk about how we do this, how we get students so engaged in research at Southwestern. And when he first asked me, I thought, oh sure, that's going to be no problem, right? He said, keep it under 25, not a problem. And then as I began to collect all the information about how much research we're doing with students, I realized, yeah, that's actually going to be a challenge to do this. So I'm going to keep this as short as I can, and I'm going to give you a lot of thumbnail sketches of what we do. Sociology and anthropology faces a really unique challenge at Southwestern. Most students who come here don't know what sociology and anthropology are when they get started here. And that's in large part because sociology and anthropology aren't taught at most high schools. So sociology and anthropology are sister disciplines. Right? We tackle the same central question, but just from slightly different angles. So we tend to ask, how do group membership, cultural context, and social hierarchies like gender, race, and class affect people's lived experiences and how they see the world. Now, sociology tends to do this by looking at contemporary patterns of interaction in the United States, and anthropology tends to do this by looking more at systems of cultural meaning in countries other than the United States. But that's changing. We have anthropologists like Dr. Sandejo who study the United States, and there are a number of sociologists who are starting to look at countries around the world. Sociology and anthropology are a really key part of a liberal arts education. One of the things our students learn is that there are a huge variety of ways of doing things and understanding behaviors and words around the world. And the more that our students learn that the same word can have different meanings or the same behavior or gesture can have different meanings, the better they become at understanding why other people are doing what they're doing. And by being able to adopt someone else's point of view, right, students become really good at starting to resolve conflicts and starting to work to promote positive social change in the world. So in our curriculum, we really work to develop students' skills. We work to develop their liberal arts skills of reading critically, thinking critically, writing clearly and persuasively, being able to give verbal presentations that everybody understands. But we also, in order to make sure that our students are prepared for the business world, they're prepared for a variety of occupations, we tend to focus on building their research skills. So very quickly, in the sociology major, we start building students' research skills from the very beginning. In their introductory classes, students learn the basics of how to pose a question and find the information they need to answer it. After they take Intro Sociology, we require students to take Intro to Anthropology so they get that sense of how different people do things. But they also go on and they start taking research methods where they start to learn how to analyze data, how to write up surveys. We also require them to take a theory course and three more sociology courses. And many of those upper level sociology courses have research projects embedded in the course. And then finally, a student finishes their sociology major with the senior capstone class, where they design and carry out their own independent research project. Our anthropology major follows a very similar structure. Students start with both introductory classes, and then they take ethnographic methods, where they start to design their research project. And usually in anthropology, students will work on that project through the rest of their major. So in their theory course, they'll start to think about how to theorize their project. They'll carry it out often during study abroad. And then in the capstone course, they put it all together and write it and analyze it. One thing I would point out about our anthropology major is that it's unusually rigorous. Compared to other institutions like us, if they even have an anthropology program, they do not typically require their students to take both methods and theory. So we have a pretty rigorous program. So in both sociology and anthropology, we develop our students' research skills through three different arenas. First, we embed research projects in a number of the classes. Second, a number of students use the research projects in classes to springboard into collaborative research with faculty. And then finally, all of our students work on independent research projects in their capstone. 
So in upper level sociology classes, we have a lot of research projects embedded in the courses. And I just want to give you a quick sense of some of the kinds of projects that we do. In research methods, a number of students will learn about survey methods. And some of the research projects embedded in methods have included things like working with local schools to create a parent satisfaction survey. Uh, last semester, I taught research methods, and I had students survey both professors and students on campus to see if they have the same idea about what constitutes an effective teacher. Uh, so if you're interested in that, look for the posters at the Research and Creative Works Symposium in April. Students also learn to analyze existing data. So for example, in Dr. Byron's Sociology of Work class, students work with the World Values Survey to do comparative analyses, like what the effects of welfare policies are in Sweden compared to the United States. We also have classes where students learn content analysis, where you might study movies or TV shows. Uh, we also have classes where you might learn participant observation, where you would go and become part of a group and see how they do things. And finally, we have courses where students learn to engage in in-depth interviews. So for example, I taught a class last year called Latinos in Education in the US, where we interviewed Latino college students about their experiences with college. And I had two students pictured on the slide, uh, Claire Blythe and Guillermo Alvarado, who wrote such fantastic papers that they are going to work on them and take them and present them at a regional sociology conference. We also had the opportunity just after the semester ended to write a book chapter for an edited volume. And so I worked with Claire and Guillermo in the summer uh, on this chapter. So we put this picture together. It's completely staged uh, because the opportunity came so late, we didn't have time to apply for funds so that we could all be in the same city. So Claire was actually in Austin. Guillermo was in San Antonio. I was in Georgetown. Uh, so if we took a realistic looking picture of this, you would have seen one person staring at a phone or a computer, and we didn't think that gave you the image of collaborative research that we engaged in. So in anthropology, students also tend to work on research projects that are embedded in their classes. But unlike sociology, where students might do a different project in each class, in anthropology, students tend to start one project in ethnographic methods, where they design it and start to pilot it. And they usually keep working on that same project all the way through their major. So uh, Fahima Dawi, who's pictured on the slide, started a project about breast cancer survivors in ethnographic methods, and she carried it out during her study abroad program in Mumbai, India. So she worked uh, studying the experiences of breast cancer survivors who were part of this one particular nonprofit organization. And she really inspired the civic engagement project in the Global Health Paideia Cluster. Her research was so good. Not all of our anthropology majors are able to study abroad, so if they cannot go abroad because of financial reasons, our anthropology majors typically design a project in methods that they can carry out at home or in the local Central Texas area. Some of our students use the research projects in their classes as sort of a springboard to get involved with collaborative research with faculty. Now this often occurs in the summers, uh, but sometimes through independent projects during the year. I did not think when I started putting this presentation together that we had done a lot of collaborative research, but as you can see on the slide from the list of topics, we've actually done a lot of projects with students over the last decade. So we have had Dr. Byron working with students looking at employment discrimination cases and how home invasion robberies are described in newspapers. Dr. Byron and Dr. Lowe, Dr. Lowe is the one staring very intently at the computer in the picture on the slide. She and Dr. Byron have worked for the last several years trying to gauge the campus climate in terms of gender and race and sexual orientation. Dr. Lowe has also worked with students to examine and analyze the racial dynamics of neighborhood listserv postings. I have worked with students to conduct participant observation at middle school summer camps, and going back to middle school in your late 30s is something else, let me tell you. I've also worked with students to study first generation Latino high school students in a college readiness program. Dr. Kane has done collaborative research with students studying the upcoming changes in the MCAT. They've been looking at how psychology departments and sociology departments and pre-med advisors are preparing for that change. And he's currently working with some students who are studying LGBT neighborhoods in London. 
Now, it's not as common for anthropologists to engage in collaborative research with students. Partly that has to do with the norms of the field. It's not unusual for an anthropologist to develop a research relationship with one group of people and continually go back and study that group over and over again for 20, 30, maybe even 40 years. So that makes it difficult to bring an undergraduate student into that research site because you have a student for three or four years here and it's hard to say, hey, look, here's my research site. You're gonna be here for the next 40 years. Uh, but Dr. Sandejo has actually done a really fantastic job of bringing students into two of her research projects. The first is called Spirit Stories, where she studied the spiritual and religious transformations of Chicano activists in Texas. And the picture on the slide is of two of our students, Janice Contreras and Abby Morales, who were doing participant observation at the 40th anniversary of La Raza Unidas party. In addition, Dr. Sandejo is currently working on the Latina History Project, and they are working to develop oral histories and archives of documents that really tell the story of some of the Latino women who are engaged in political movements and social justice movements. In the capstones, particularly in the sociology capstone, our students are designing and carrying out independent research projects. And this involves a lot of very time and labor intensive mentoring on the part of the faculty member. Dr. Lowe, who's been teaching the capstone for a number of years, has students pick a topic on some aspect of social justice, some aspect of gender, race, class, uh, and she really works with them to help them design the project, carry it out, collect the data, write it up, and present it in one semester. And I think in terms of uh, how the professor has to mentor the students, Dr. Lowe described it really beautifully when she said, mentoring in capstone is about pushing the students to do more than they thought possible, and then knowing when to pull back and show them that they had already achieved more than they thought they could, and then go right back to pushing them. In the anthropology capstone, our professors do a really fantastic job of bringing the teacher-scholar model into the capstone. So our anthropology students are working on analyzing the data that they've collected in their study abroad program or in their local research projects. And the capstone professor actually works side by side with them, often writing her own paper as they're writing theirs, so that she can really say, like, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm experiencing the same challenge as you are. Dr. Sandejo talks very much in her capstone about how important it is to build scholarly community and to have the students giving each other feedback so that they're helping each other become better. And Dr. Sandejo says, right, some of the comments that really push those papers to the next level are coming from the other students in her class. So by this point in the presentation, you can probably tell that we're pretty proud of our program. We think our students are awesome. We think we're doing really great work with the students. But I'm here to tell you it's not just us. One of the ways that we've gotten external recognition for the research that our students do is through conference presentations. Our students since 2005 have presented 100 papers at regional and national sociology conferences. Now, I picked that time frame of since 2005 because that's when the fourth professor in sociology was added. And that helped free us up to engage in a lot of this time and, and labor intensive mentoring of students. The students, when they have presented these 100 papers at conferences, do such a phenomenal job that it's not unusual for other professors and graduate students at the conference to come up and ask them if that is their master's thesis or their PhD dissertation. So our students do a phenomenal job. Now based on the picture, you might think that Dr. Kane was responsible for 10% of these 100 papers, but those students in the photograph are actually only representing three papers because they were working in teams of two to three. In anthropology, since 2006, our students have presented 33 conference papers. Now I want to put that number in context just briefly. The anthropology program is both smaller than the sociology program, they have half the number of professors, and also they're a newer major. They only became a major on campus, I think in 2002. So the 33 student papers is quite a lot for a smaller program. And our anthropology majors also do a phenomenal job when they present at these conferences. Most of them present at one particular regional conference, and the chairs of that conference now purposely seek out our student presentations because they know that we're going to have the best student presentations at the conference. 
At many of the regional and national conferences that our students present at, there are paper competitions. In sociology, at the national level, the honorary society Alpha Kappa Delta runs a paper competition. And six, since 2006, which was the first year we submitted for the paper competition, our students have won first place three times, second place once, and third place twice. At the regional level since 2006, our students have won that competition six times and taken an honorable mention once. And although it's not external, internally at Southwestern we have a Shern Writing Award competition and in two of the three competitions that were held, one of our students won. Anthropology conferences also have paper competitions and since 2007, at the Southwestern Anthropological Association Conference, our students have won that paper competition three times and they've also placed second twice. In addition, we had one student go to a different regional conference, the Southern Anthropological Association, and she took first place in their paper competition. Since 2007, we've really been working to encourage our students to publish their research. And in that time, we've had four students publish their capstone papers in undergraduate research journals. And in addition, we've had 10 students publish co-authored papers in sociology journals with faculty. So looking into the future, our goal in the sociology and anthropology department is to continue to stand as a national model for excellence in sociology and anthropology programs. So in order to continue serving as a model of excellence, we're looking into ways to make research with and mentoring research by students more sustainable. So we're looking into ways to try to increase funding for the summer collaborative research. We're also looking for ways to try to get more anthropology majors the funds they need to study abroad. But no matter what happens going into the future, this is an emphasis in the department that we're going to continue. And the reason for that is that there are a number of very positive consequences for having students engaged in research in sociology and anthropology. One, as I said earlier in the talk, is that it helps students develop skills that they can take into a wide variety of careers. Law, medicine, business, social work, nonprofit administration, all of those fields require research skills. But secondly, it's also about developing the student as a whole. Watching the student go through these research processes, it helps to deepen the advising relationship with students. It also is just a a privilege as a faculty member for me to see how much the students develop self-confidence, how much their skills grow, and just how much more ready they are to take on the world after they graduate. So as you can tell, I'm really passionate about the role of student research in the sociology and anthropology curricula. And I'm really proud of my colleagues and how much they've worked with students to help them develop their research. I think that it makes us one of the strongest departments on campus. But what really gets me excited is the future and how many students we're going to have working on research of their own and research with us. Thank you.